My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, yeah. So uh, my name is Jesse Wuji. I'm tuning in from Southern California. Beautiful, great, great weather here, all that stuff going on. So yeah, for me, uh, for those who don't know who I am, um, you know, I'm a, a, an officer in the Navy. I'm a U.S. Navy lieutenant, but I'm also a driver in NASCAR. Um, I've been uh, racing NASCAR for the last five years, just working my way up the ladder. And then also on the side of all that stuff, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I've started up now two businesses. I'm getting the third one going right now. I'm just trying to really take an entrepreneurial approach to NASCAR racing and, and getting myself, you know, through the ranks. So um, it's been a really yes. fun journey so far. And I've been the, it's been a crazy grind. And, you know, throughout this session, I'll kind of go into more, more of the weeds of the story. Love it. Thank you so much for your service. And you are a crazy man. <laughs> I, I just want you to have that on audio and video. You're yeah. one crazy man. How do you go from Navy to racing cars? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, for me, uh, going kind of, you know, being able to make it all happen. So originally, you know, I'm from Dallas, Texas. Both of my parents, they grew up in Africa before coming to Nigeria, before coming uh, over here to the U.S. They immigrated in the 80s. They had me and my two brothers and my sister in, in Dallas. Um, we grew up there our whole life. And at first, football was like my main thing. Like, I, I love football. I wanted to be a football player. So I worked really, really hard in high school to get myself um, into a position where I could get recruited by different schools. So um, coming into my senior year in high school, I finally started getting recruited by the Naval Academy. And when they came, I just looked at it as a great opportunity to go off to a great university, get a great education, um, be able to play football for a team that was winning a lot of games and going to bowl games. And then, you know, when I graduate, be able to start a career um, as an officer in the United States Navy. So I saw it as a great win. I took that opportunity, went off to school there, played great football for four years, got my education, graduated in 2010 and became an officer. And I was a surface warfare officer. So for those who don't know what a surface warfare officer is, uh, what we do is we operate the ships. So I was on the ships for my first four years in the Navy, uh, went on two different deployments with those ships, um, spent about 15 total months in the Arabian Gulf um, before coming back to the U.S. And then, um, you know, during that time, back and forth between deployments and underways and all that stuff, when I was back home in San Diego, you know, since football was over for me, um, I was developing this passion towards uh, cars and racing. So I, I had a couple fast cars that I bought myself and I would take them to the track and do track days with them, you know, every weekend that I could that I had all. Off. And, um, you know, after doing that for a few years, finally, I was sitting in my room one night. Uh, it was like January 2014, sitting in my room one night. And I just made this crazy decision. I was like, you know what? I want to become a professional race car driver. And literally at that moment, that's basically when the journey began. And I took my whiteboard off of my wall and I wrote on that whiteboard like three goals. And the top one was become a professional race car driver. And that was the start right there. From there, it was putting that focused energy every single day towards it, whether it was researching it, going and meeting people, networking, learning from different people who were actually doing it. Whatever I could do, I was putting energy towards it every single day. And it's crazy how once you start putting that focused energy towards things every day, you start seeing different doors open up for you. Um, different uh, people start coming into your lives, all that stuff. I, uh, two months later, I, I met a guy by the name Kyle Wisner. Um, he, uh, he was uh, racing late model stock cars at that time. And um, he introduced me to his um, team that he was racing with. And, you know, I got to do a test with them and it went well. And then after that test, you know, the next year I decided to start racing with them. And I had to find the funding to race. Finding funding wasn't easy. So I was like, okay, I can either sit here and spend the rest of my life looking for sponsorship or I can start my own small business and make some extra money on the side to support my true goal, which was racing in NASCAR. So um, I started my own small business where I was actually hosting my own drag racing events um, at a Famoso Raceway in Bakersfield, California. And uh, I did, uh, I was doing at that time in 2015, I was doing it like three of them a year in 2016. I did um, six of them that year and so on. And it kept on growing and growing. And um, each event was just doing better and better and better. And it gave me opportunity to make just a little bit of extra money on the side to be able to actually get myself into racing in NASCAR. And then from there, I was able to find some sponsorship. And I was just always mixing the business side with uh, um, with the sponsorship side and just putting it together just to get myself. You got in. the whole Navy behind you. What do you need a sponsorship? Where's the prices? <laughs> Call them up. Give me, give me the phone. Who's in charge of the, the funding? You got the whole Navy. You need funding? What are you talking about? We give them trillions of dollars, and you tell me they can't fund you? Man, yeah. well, maybe put one them on the phone with the guy. 
Put Make me on the day. phone with the guy. <laughs> now, I don't guarantee results, but I can get on the phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, maybe one day. Who knows? Well, maybe one day we'll get him on board as a sponsor. We've been working on it for a while. I have a great agent, uh, Matt Casto. He's been really working on a lot of stuff for me. He's helped me find a lot of sponsorship. And also, um, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's working at Navy Angle. So hopefully we can make it happen. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So here's my question. So when you go, I never understood this. So when you go on a deployment for 15 months, you're still getting paid salary, obviously. So when you come back, are you a rich person? Or do you guys just spend the deal? Come on, tell me the truth. What happened? Yeah. Yeah, Why so these Navy boys need businesses when they make so much? <laughs> what do you spend money on the ship for 15 months? I thought the food were provided. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So so that is, you you are very right. When If you do it right, if you're smart about it, um, depending on what your life situation is. You know, for me, I was single at the time. I wasn't married. I don't have kids or anything like that. So I didn't have anybody to worry about back at home. So when I went on deployment, yeah, I was able to save a lot. Like my first deployment, um, 10 months in Bahrain, um, tax-free. And I didn't really have any bills except maybe my cell phone bill and the storage bill for storing my stuff, which was like $100 a month. Um, I, I mean, I didn't have more than like maybe a, a few hundred dollars a month of bills still left at that time because I didn't I, I didn't have my place I was renting anymore none of that and I was able to save in those ten months like almost fifty thousand dollars just in those ten months because it was tax free I didn't have anything to spend money on um, so yeah people who are going on deployment um, you know depending on you know obviously what rank you are and how much you're getting paid everyone's gonna have a certain level that they can actually save a lot of people that's a good time if you're looking to become an entrepreneur and start your own business. Use the deployment as a time to really save up money and actually have your starting funds you need to do whatever you need to do in life. You know, don't go wasting the money. Don't go, you know, spending it on stuff that you're never going to use again. Like save that money, whether it's even 10 grand, 20 grand, whatever it is, save it and um, maximize it when you come home. Yeah, definitely. Because I was just thinking, I was like, maybe I should do a deployment. Yeah. I don't think my... <laughs> so listen... So I had this 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 argument. I always have this argument with my wife. We don't like football and we don't like UFC. And her reasoning is that it's barbaric. So football mm -hmm. and UFC, they tackle each other mm -hmm. for no regards of any injuries. They just go at it. Yeah. The person who's got the ball, you just attack. Mm -hmm. There's no limitation. So here's my question. How crazy do you have to be to play football? Uh, you got to have a different mindset, that's for sure. It's, it's, it's definitely not – I wouldn't say it's a super natural game. I don't think it's, like, a natural human thing to go play it. Because, yeah, when I think about it, I'm like, man, what are we doing out here, you know? But, um, yeah, it, it is pretty crazy. It's fun, though. It, it's fun when you can elude the tacklers – or if you're a tackler, if you can actually get to the person who's trying to elude you, that's what makes it fun, I guess. Um, and then it's just, you know, your will against somebody else's will. You know, that that's the biggest thing, you know, without like, you know, uh, you go back a thousand years ago, there was the gladiator fights where they like actually like tried to kill people. At least we're not trying to Listen, kill each other. If you're coming towards me, I'm just going to hand you the ball. I am not going <laughs> to run away. You're coming towards me. I'm just gonna <laughs> hand you the ball, and I'm just gonna go sit down. <laughs> the, co the coach is gonna the coach is gonna punch you, uh, put, uh, put you on the sidelines after that. <laughs> <laughs> you know that's how, so. Okay, so here's my question: Can you tell us what benefits you've gotten from Navy's experience that would translate itself into entrepreneurship and business? Because I know everybody knows that in any type of military. Doesn't matter which country, which, you know, everywhere, the discipline is there. Yeah. The organization is there. The uniform is there. You know, the hierarchy is there. The ranking is there. The respect for most part is there. So these, these are like the known facts out there that's been lingering around for hundreds of years and we know it. Mm -hmm. What are things that people don't know that you get by serving that will give you that edge over a normal person? who's just brand new coming to the business or entrepreneurship. Yeah. So, um, you know, things that you're going to learn while serving um, that's going to help you in the entrepreneurial world is really um, that uh, I think a lot of us learn in the military and it, it's that kind of no excuse type game where, you know, sometimes we're given only a little bit, like the resources we're actually given to go accomplish the mission. Sometimes we're not given all the resources that we really want or maybe we really need. But whatever we're given with, we can take that and make it into something. So even though we're given a little, we can make a lot happen. And that, that kind of skill right there and that kind of mindset, knowing that, hey, I don't need to be baby through this whole thing. Just give me a little bit. Just give me just even just a one simple direction. 
I'll take it from there and make it happen. And that's what we learn in the military right there. A lot of people learn that. A lot of people experience that a lot. Um, we experience, we have to uh, learn how to time manage a lot in the military. I mean, they pack a lot into our days. I mean, we're, we're up at early in the morning, zero five, zero six, you know, going to sleep at, you know, midnight or so each night. Like, we're, you know, we're, we're up all day. We're working all day. We're used to long hours. We're used to tough hours. And we're used to having all that stress and being tired and, and, you know, wanting to get some rest. And all that. We're, we're, we're in those positions a lot. And then we're also handling, you know, big, heavy machinery, big equipment, ships, tanks, planes, you're doing all this stuff and you're doing it and you're having to be focused and ready and, and able to execute every single time. So when you get put in those high stress type environments, that helps you a lot in the entrepreneurial world because the entrepreneurial world is definitely high stress for sure. Um, you know, some days you're going to have really good days and there's going to be some very bad days, but having these tools that you learned and, and different things that you learned in the military, uh, you apply that to the entrepreneurial world, it can help you a lot and you'll, you'll always be ready for the fight that you don't even know is coming. Yeah, I mean, entrepreneurship is like, especially when you start getting some attractions, you have snipers all over the place. And, you know, I've you seen movies in military, you know, when you go to war, there's like one or two sniper groups. When you get to entrepreneurship, there's like a hundred of sniper groups that are coming after you. Always. Like, not just one or two. So and you've been not always in your face. Some of them are behind your back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And then there is no warning. There is no this. You know, you know when you go to the battlefield, you know this area, let's oh, yeah. say a stretch of 100 miles, you know this is the war zone. But yeah. when you get to the business world, I mean, it's the whole country is your war zone. So oh, yeah. you have them coming from all angles. All angles, yep, yep. But the thing is, too, even when you have, you know, all those threats coming from all angles, you still have to learn. You still have to have empathy. You still have to have compassion for people. You know, you can't just be a straight up monster, you know, because some people think that, oh, when you get in the business world, you just have to be just this monster and ruthless and just blah, 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 kill everything. Well, you, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, that's one way of going about it and you could and maybe it, it works for you in a certain way. But at the end of the day, like the people who truly, truly make it are people who can understand the line. They understand when to fight and they understand when to have empathy and, and actually compassion for people and be kind. You know, at the end of the day, you can't be a monster the whole time. I agree with that 100%. Listen, it just, to me, it's, it's just good business. You just got to know, at the end of the day, yeah. we're serving another human being or yeah. group of human beings. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you got to keep that in mind. And I think when you have the moral compass set the right way from the beginning, the foundation, yeah. I think it's always, you know, I've always, I don't know, the older that I get, I always wonder why. I always wonder in, in, in politics, in military, in a lot of different aspects of, of, of public service, yeah. you see that when things go wrong, the leadership always takes the fault, even though they had nothing to do with it. Yeah, but it just happened it under their supervision. Yeah. And I always wondered in the military, like, if the soldiers made the mistake or whatever the case was, why does the, the head guy resign? Like, I was like, he yeah. didn't do anything. Yeah. Like what you know, it, but then as I'm getting older, I'm like, no, that is, that shows leadership, that shows organization, that shows hierarchy, yeah. that he's holding himself responsible and not everybody else, mm -hmm. and that just stems from top. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and the reason why is because you know when you're in that high position, you are tasked with taking care of these people below. You're tasked with training them, equipping them with the best tools that you can, and and just giving them the opportunity to succeed. And if, and if the young sailor or Marine or air, airman or soldier or whatever makes a lot of mistakes on, under your watch, you know, uh, and, and or, you know, let's say they're not going rogue, they just keep on screwing up because you didn't give them everything that they needed. Well, then, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's the leadership's fault. The, leadership's did, the leadership didn't lead them in a way to put them in a position to win. Now, if they did everything they could, leadership is, has all the documentation in the world showing, hey, we did everything we could to put this person in the winning position and they just went off themselves. That's another thing. But, um, you know, a lot of times that's not the case. I, I see that. So what do you find? What's the, what's the fun part of business and what are the aspects of business that you don't like? 
I would say the fun parts are really, I mean, I guess the process, right? The process is fun, really knowing that like every move you make is, is, is there to benefit you and the business, right? So every time you make this positive move, you know, it's helping you a lot. That's why as entrepreneurs, I think a lot of entrepreneurs know this, like they're willing to work 20, 20 hours a day. They don't care because it's not work to them. They know that, that every move helps them, right? It's just like when you're working out, like you're willing to do a lot of reps because you know every single rep is going to make you a little bit stronger. You're willing to do that extra sprint because you know that extra sprint is going to make you a little bit faster. It's the same thing in business. Every step you take, waking up early, grinding all day, like you're fine with that. Whether, But when you're like working just a regular nine to five W2 job, on the other hand, like your every move you make is only going to still make you the same amount of money each year. You're not, it's not going to change. Right. Which kind of sucks. And it's like, okay, why do I need to work extra hard? You know, unless you're trying to like move up the ranks or something like that. But even then that's not even guaranteed, but in the business world, like as long as you're putting that effort every single day, you're guaranteed to advance forward. And, and that doesn't always mean that you're just going to make a lot more money or something like that, but you're advancing forward in your mind. You're learning how to like dodge mistakes. You're learning how to just, just maneuver through this crazy world. So that's, I would say that's the fun part. Um, the not so fun parts are when you got to deal with all the issues and, and there's fires all the time, all the time. I mean, every morning I wake up, I'm like, I, I when I, I, I just, I kind of just cringe when I'm about to look at my phone to be like, okay, how many missed calls did I have? Because probably those missed calls were probably a fire that I didn't miss. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, I'm looking Listen, at Listen, man, I mean, the I, feelings I are mutual. I, the I feelings are phone. mutual. Yeah. You I, become I a good my... fireman. You become a good fireman. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, I, uh, I clear out my phone every night. I mean, by the time I go to sleep, I usually don't. I have maybe a few emails still left there. Um, no text. Uh, most of my social media messages have already been answered. All, all this I've done. And then, you know, I go to sleep usually between midnight and 1 a.m. each day and then go to sleep, wake up, you know, like six hours later, all of a sudden, uh, I, I'm like, how do I have a hundred and something messages, like, you know, 30 emails, like, how do I, where did this all come from in the last six hours? People, did they not sleep or something or what? <laughs> it's crazy. I said two of them were probably me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I love it. Listen, I think a true entrepreneur is going to do it for the process and the journey, not the money. Yeah, you have uh, to. That, that's just a, because if you do it for money, there's no amount of money that we could pay you for you to be working, you know, 18 hours a day, nonstop, mm -hmm. five, six, seven, sometimes eight days a week. You know, yeah. that, that's what ends up happening. And, and, and it's so funny that you bring this up this morning. I was talking, we were shooting a, a new course in our studio in LA. And by the way, whenever you're in town, let us know. We'll definitely love to have you in the studio. We were talking to the guys, and one of the girls asked me a very, you know, very straight up question. She's like, we're not making any money out of this, and we're just putting good content. What's the point? And I said, let me tell you what the point is. Every day when I wake up, I get two or three messages, not a lot, two or three messages, mainly direct messages from people on this planet that thank us and our channel because we're putting good content out there. And they don't have to worry about coming to our channel where we're going to monetize and run ads to them. Or do. We might do that in the future, but we haven't done it for two and a half years. So we've been putting out good content, right? So I said, that's the fulfillment. And that's why you see so many people that are rich and they go do drugs. They commit suicide. They're attracted to pornography. They do all these different stupid things. They're not in meaningful relationships. They have horrible relationship with their family. I said, the reason why we do it, we may not get the money, but we're getting the fulfillment. And the fulfillment is driving us where when we go home, we might be tired, but we feel good mm -hmm. that we did something that we're helping other individuals achieve their goals. I said, that's why we're doing this. And, you know, she smiles. She goes, okay, I get what we're trying to do. I said, that's the mission. If you can do it without asking for a compensation, mm -hmm. the universe will compensate you, no doubt. Yep. It may not be in monetary wise, but I said, look, you're going to go home and we, got, we did the video shooting the whole day. I said, but you're not tired. You're smiling and going home and you're proud of what you've accomplished and you're going to go brag it to a lot of your audiences that we did do this video and you're excited for it to come out, but you're not telling them how much it is because you're not worrying about the, the financial side. So that's why we do what we do. So I think it's the journey yeah. and the path. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe no. we should monetize and make money and the money makes us more happy. I don't know. 
We just haven't you're, done you're that. You're doing it right. You're doing it right. I think even uh, Gary V talks about it a lot. You know, Gary V. I mean, he puts out so much stuff on the on the internet, and he doesn't like make money. I mean, you know, maybe on some of the YouTube stuff, he might make some of the, some ad money and stuff like that. Maybe on Facebook, make some, make some ad money, cool. But I mean, he's not. That's not money. He's he's not living off of it. It's just extra little whatever. But he just puts out content every single day just to help people because he knows. The more he's putting out in the universe, just like you said, universe will come back and give it to you. Like the the when you can help someone achieve their dream, your dreams will also come true. Also, so so that's what I people got to look at. So, how do people find you? Uh, for me, um, social media, I'm on pretty much all the platforms, uh, mainly Instagram and Facebook. But um, you know, they can reach out to me. Um, even I think on here, I think you can probably click on my name somewhere or wherever. But uh, you know, look me up, Jesse Iwuji. Um, if you can't spell it, go on to Google and type in Navy NASCAR driver. I'll be the only one that pops up for like four or five pages. So uh, look for me on there. Um, reach out to me. I answer all my messages. I'm actually kind of backed up on messages. It's like the first time I'm like, like this backed up on messages. Usually I'm clearing everything out all the time. But like these last couple of days, I've received a lot more than I was ready to handle. Plus, if people understand, man, you're a busy guy. People understand. <laughs> you can wait a few days before you get to them. You're all right. No yeah. but I like to clear mine up every night because I panic if I don't because two three days that thing will add up. So I, up. I do it because I don't want to panic. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> listen, I appreciate you taking this time out of your busy schedule being with us this morning. And listen, whenever. So where are you at? Are you in LA or are you in SB? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm east of LA right now. Yeah, I mean about a, I would say about forty five minutes east of LA. Don't do it, man. Listen, whenever you get a chance, come to the studio. Let's shoot, let's shoot some video content and whatever you need, the commercial, the informational, and let's work on that pitch. We need yeah. to get you more sponsorship. Let's get Navy on it. If you oh. need to hashtag Navy, give money to NASCAR. I mean, if that is that, if that's what we got to do, that's what we got to do. And whatever we got to do, whatever we got to do. I'm, I'm still short on sponsorship right now. If I can even, yeah, if I can even find just a little bit for each one of these races I'm trying to run for the, for the rest of this year, that would be... A blessing so anybody out there who could sponsor me even just a little bit reach out to me please <laughs> let's do it brother looking forward to it i appreciate you taking the time and being here and listen anytime you need anything let us know yeah most definitely thank you so much for having me you got to talk to you soon bye-bye all right talk to you later